Alright, now let's take a look at this example, example 1, uh, which we'll, we will use the quotient rule as well as the product rule to let you have a few and to s of the difference between using a quotient rule um, and versus using a product rule. Okay, so find dy dx if y equals to this. Okay, and again, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to color code it. So we call the top the red and we're going to call the bottom the blue. Okay. So that will make things easier for us to identify which one are we talking about. So according to the formula, all right, now dy dx, all right, so there's a red being the top. Okay, so the numerator we shall call it the top and uh, the blue being the bottom. Okay, so, so we have a top and a bottom. So according to the formula that we discussed earlier on in the previous video, um, we'll keep the bottom. Okay, keep the bottom intact, totally don't touch it, and differentiate the top. So when you differentiate the top, we will be left with 3, and that's all. Okay, and we're going to minus away, we keep the top. Okay, and we're going to differentiate the bottom. Now, differentiating the bottom is interesting because um, this is actually 4x minus 1 to the power of negative half. Wait, sorry, just half. Okay, you, you don't think of it as being a denominator, just differentiate as it is. So as it is, this is this. Okay, so when we differentiate this, this is going to be a chain rule so we're going to bring down the half and uh, the 4x minus 1 okay we remain and the power becomes negative half and we are going to differentiate the inside which will give us a 4 okay so this is what we have at the top all right uh, differentiate sorry keep the bottom differentiate the top minus way keep the top differentiate the bottom and there's a chain rule involved here Okay, the entire thing divided by the bottom square. So this is a square root. So when we square it, well, the square root disappears. Okay, so it becomes something like this. And uh, all we need to do now at this moment is to simplify this. Okay, and the way we're going to simplify this is uh, we're going to understand that um, what we have here, let me try to highlight this to show you. Uh, what we have here, this is actually a fraction. Okay, with um, this 4x minus 1 to the power of um, negative half actually being the denominator of the fraction and everything else will become the numerator okay so so let us try now uh, for this term what we have is something very simple all right it simply becomes 3 uh, the square root of 4x minus 1 okay uh, whereas for the second term behind all right this is where we've got to be a little bit more careful there's a half and there's a four so needless to say the half and the four will cancel each other and be left with a two so this two okay couple with this uh, 3x uh, plus two okay, so two and the 3x plus two okay will become the numerator of this fraction that i discussed with you earlier on isn't it and the denominator will be the square root of the 4x minus one Okay, and the entire thing will be divided by 4x minus 1. Now, I want you to understand that at this point, okay, if you, if you have fully understood this step here, okay, you basically understand your quotient rule, okay? So, using the quotient rule is not difficult because this is it, okay? This is how you will get this answer using the quotient rule. You keep the bottom, you differentiate the top, minus the way you keep the top, differentiate the bottom over the bottom square. Okay, but the trouble more often than not for where, where, which students face is not using the quotient rule as it is. Okay, um, it's usually the aftermath of it. Okay, which means um, you know you, you need to get to the answer, um, and and this isn't the answer. Okay, and you need to simplify to get the answer. So this is what uh, problem uh, the, the problem that most students tend to have. Okay, so let's take a look at how do we resolve this. Okay, now what I want you to understand uh, is to see a parallel between a, a similar um, situation that you're in here. For example, if you have 3 minus 1 over 4, okay, divided by 5, something like this. Um, and you cannot solve this using a calculator, of course, what would you do? Of course, you need to first resolve this, isn't it? So that it becomes a fraction so that it becomes something over something okay and divided by five okay once you have this then of course you can try to work it out right you have the, a fraction divided by a number five and, and of course uh, you know what to do okay so so let us try to employ this idea here okay how do we make into a common denominator when you have two fractions like this okay of course common denominator means uh, you must have the same denominator so the denominator being a uh, 4x minus 1 to the square root of 4x minus 1 so okay let's 
uh, to, in order to make this into a common denominator, uh, you need to multiply by 4x minus 1, square root 4x minus 1 here. Okay, so we'll be left with this. Okay, now this is your basic uh, basic algebra that you learn when you are in um, sec 2 or something like that. Okay, so, so it shouldn't be something too troubling. Okay, or too confusing for you. Alright, so this is it. This is the, 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 the numerator. Okay, and of course the denominator being 4x minus 1. There you go. Alright, and, and of course, uh, to simplify this even further, let us uh, recall what we have um, learned before, and that is uh, when we have something, uh, a fraction divided by a fraction like this, when the A over B divided by C over D, okay, the answer is simply, okay, bring down the B and bring up the D. So we end up with AD over BC. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to bring down this denominator. So the rule being that only denominators can move. So um, denominator being the, okay, uh, being the B and the D. So the, the B, the denominator will be brought down and the D, the denominator will be brought up. Okay, so in this particular case, what we have here, uh, there's only one denominator here and that's the 4x minus 1, uh, square root of 4x minus 1. Okay, so naturally what we are thinking of here uh, is to bring down this denominator. Alright, so, so what we have here, this is actually power half and this is actually power 1. So when we have power half multiplied by power 1, okay, what we have is something like this again, isn't it? Uh, according to the law of indices, uh, AM multiplied by AN, uh, we will be ended up with um, A to the power of M plus N. Okay, so this being power half, and uh, the, the original being power 1, so naturally we will have 1 plus half, which will give us 1 and a half. Okay, and what's left at the top here well, is something pretty easy to work out, isn't it? We'll be left with 12x minus 3 minus away 6x minus 4. Okay, and of course, uh, further simplifying yields us the answer of 6x minus 7 over the 4x minus 1, the entire thing to the power of 3 over 2. So this is it, this is our answer. Okay, uh, if we were to use quotient rule to solve this particular question. I hope it's pretty okay and um, it's pretty important, the quotient rule, because you can actually do your uh, steps pretty fast. Okay, let me show you another alternative and that is using the product rule to solve a question like this. So let me use another color, you know, about using red. Uh, and uh, Okay, so let me find some space. Uh, let's scroll this down a little, but we need to copy the question. Okay, okay, let's uh, do it here. Alright, so our job is to differentiate okay, a fraction like this, which is 3x plus 2 over the square root of 4x minus 1. Okay, and now we can scroll it down. Okay, we need all the space we want. Uh, bear in mind that this is the answer. Okay, so this is the answer that we try to get using the product rule now. Okay, so first step, of course, uh, we have to rewrite this uh, as a product, okay, before we can apply the product rule. So uh, writing this as a product is not something difficult, okay, we end up with something like this. Okay, and of course, uh, then we apply the product rule, which is to differentiate one, keep there. So we keep the 3x minus, uh, sorry, keep uh, 3x plus 2, okay, and we differentiate this. Okay, now this will involve a chain rule, right, which will be 4x minus 1 to the power of 3, negative 3 over 2, and multiply by a 4. Okay, and now uh, we'll plus, instead of minus, the product rule is a plus, so we'll keep the other one, okay, which is the 4x minus 1 to the power of negative half, and we differentiate the front, which is a 3. Okay, so this is our product rule and this is it. This is the derivative, all right? The answer is already here. So now the trouble or rather the challenge here is how do we change this or convert this into this single fraction answer uh, in a, the quickest, uh, quickest manner possible. All right, so let's try. Um, now, first of all, recognize that this is actually a fraction. Okay, so uh, the half and the four can cancel out and we're left with a two here. So the numerator will be a negative two, three x plus two while the denominator will be a 4x minus 1 entire thing to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, and right over here, uh, what we have is also another fraction, which is 3 over uh, the 4x minus 1, the entire thing to the power of negative half. Oh, no, I'm sorry, positive half, now that it becomes at the denominator. Okay, so in order to make this into a common denominator, I will need to make this into power 
3 over 2 and that will be that will mean multiply by another 4x minus 1 so that um, this will be a power 1 oh, sorry this is a minus 1 here okay so this will be a power 1 and this will be a power half and the entire thing will yield me a power of 3 over 2 okay and what's left at the top will become a negative 6x minus 4 Okay, plus, and of course, when this multiply by this, that will give me a 12x, and this multiply by this, that gives me a, a negative 3. So, simplifying, that will give us the answer of positive 6x minus 7 over the entire thing 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. So, as you can see, we actually end up with the same answer, obviously, because both are the correct. Okay, it's just a matter of which style you prefer to use okay so this is using the product rule all right uh the difference being well you got to be pretty sure about what you're dealing with because of all the negative powers okay fractions and all this okay whereas uh the quotient rule offers you a more straightforward way to get the fraction answer okay so both as its merits as well as uh, disadvantages so uh make a decision all right whether you want to master your quotient rule or not okay uh, personally my take is that you should uh, because uh, as we move along we're not just going to differentiate things like that we're going to differentiate uh, trigonometric functions we're going to differentiate exponential functions as well as um, um, at higher level we're going to have um, you know all, all Macquarie series and all this so well knowing your quotient rule is definitely a big plus okay